of the 16th century, the people of Bengal and Assam enjoyed their theater in the form of Jatra and Ankhya Nath. Theater in the round, in direct communication with the audience, with no attempt to imitate life. When the audience sits right around the arena, you cannot even think of sets. of the revolutionary bourgeoisie and capture of political power by them in England in 1688 and in France in 1789, the theatre never found it necessary to imitate life. The classical theatre did not attempt to recreate the world, but created a world of its own. And in that world, 
created human conflicts of such intensity that without the trappings of formal realism, it captured the essence of the real world. There's never been a more realistic play than King Lear. But the rise of the bourgeoisie brought to the theater a new class, shallow, flippant, and exhausted after a long day at the counting house. This class had a lot of money, but did not have the artistic imagination necessary to enjoy theater in an empty stage, in the vacuum of an empty stage. They insisted on a box stage, picture stage, a toy, a colorful plaything, a forest, a parlor, a castle, all daintily painted on canvas. Calcutta in the 18th century was the headquarters of the English merchants of the East India Company, a singularly inartistic lot of jaded and homesick individuals and racialists to boot. Calcutta Theatre in China Bazaar, but the tickets sold at prohibitive prices. One gold mohar for a box and eight sikka rupees for a seat in the stalls. This mainly to keep uh, English sailors, riffraff and white trash away. And the fare consisted strictly of the cheapest farce, with uh, but an occasional performance of very bad Shakespeare and uh, Thomas Otway. I'm sorry. Madam, have you taken leave of your senses? A typical evening's program might be a farce followed by unconnected bits of clowning. Sometimes even the pretense of theater was dropped altogether and an all-night masquerade was presented with racialist overtones. Hunka Munka was the name given to their parody of an Indian. <laughs> In a single night, they would manage to ridicule gypsies. You! You live five years! <laughs> you! You live two years! <laughs> Armenians. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
the Hindu religion. Even a sweeper woman in the street, whom they call the Mitrani. <laughs> Moguls, Persians, and Muslim noblemen in general, whom the program called Moor Men. <laughs> I want to know everything about India and want to describe it to my people. Perhaps we Russians can learn something from them, perhaps they from us. In any case, we must know each other. So said Gerasim Stepanovich Lebedev, musician, composer, actor, linguist, indologist, geographer, translator, and tireless traveler. <laughs> in Calcutta in July 1787 and began to earn his living by giving concerts and tuition. In a letter to A. A. Sambrovsky, he wrote, I struggled to learn Bengali and the general mixed languages of Hindustan and as far as possible, Sanskrit. The Brahmin pundits of the day would not teach Sanskrit to a European. They did not know that this was a different kind of European. Oi, you there, what you doing? Where you hey, crazy, hey, are you going to papers, Mr. Brooks? Mr. Brooks? Who are you? Hey. What do you think you're... Uh, now, this would go on. Now, give me your papers. Right away. I want your papers. Stay away. You joking now. Hey. This won't do it. You're coming with us. Come on. Come on. You're coming with us. Don't you get away from this, did you, sir? What is the meaning of this? I shall trouble you to keep out of this. This man is a bloody rebel. Bekrichichi, nilzia bichilabiaka. Blimey, he's a foreigner. An Italian, are you? It's Mr. Lebedev, a friend of the governor's. Blimey, the governor? You come along with me. But you can't do this, sir. This is Jogiro. He's a bloody rebel. You can't shelter him from the law. I will answer your charges in a court of law, officer. Meanwhile, I shall write and tell Colonel Kidd, the governor, that I'm holding the prisoner for him. Are you badly hurt? No. I do not speak English good. Why do they call you a rebel? Because I am. 
Are you not a Bengali? No. I am of my soul. This incident at once endeared Lebedev to the Indians. Among Lebedev's closest friends was Golok Dash, school teacher, later an associate of Raja Ram Mohan Roy. Golok learnt music from Lebedev and in return taught him Bengali. She Tokhon Bashai Chilo Na. She Tokhon Bashai Chilo Na. Ami Kora Nariya Chilam. Which means I knocked. Only in this part of the world we never knock. We make a noise on the iron ring. Boje Kakaya Sara. In order to know your country, I must go there. I'll go to Russia. Or I'll send my eldest son, Nam Jogi, to Russia. Having met you, I must know Russia too. By helping me, you have made the English lion very angry. He will be in danger. I did not help you as a person. Freedom is the same in every language. In Bengali, Telugu, or Russian. <laughs> Indians are not crushed under the iron heel of British imperialism. Foreigners who invaded their land in the past have gone. But the people of India, their culture, their national traditions are still alive. They are determined to see the end of the British rule too. Bhagavati, Tobe to me a bojo, je amiki to Janina, Chucho Kothakar Ram Shonto Morugir shop Chaturi Ami Punoscho Manus Holam Hori Bol Bhagavan Bhupotir Palokuru Shuko Moy Cholo Cholo Amadir Shokoleri Trutiache Kintu a Shondete Amra shop Komakore debo Ebong Oder Morjada Korbo Shomapon Shongbodol. Shadu, Shadu, Shonno. Mudhur, Mudhur, Ebong and Nirbhur Bangla. Kerasin, you take my breath away. Where did you learn Muruge, Shucho Kotakar, Horibol, all that Calcutta slang? Fishilish Kominia Koaliche. It's a play that ties out to be spoken on the stage. If you can get me the actors, I swear I shall get you the players. For a national theatre, I shall turn this city upside down to get you the actors. Since the Englishmen would not rent their theatres out to him, Lebedev invested all his savings into building his own in an abandoned warehouse in Doomtola Street.
Medvedev had learned his stagecraft at Fyodor Volkov's theatre in Moscow, which at that time was the most daring and innovative of all European theatres. Tahir, join. Spasiba. girl shout is a difficult business. They never do it at home. Oh, they'll do it on the stage. He'll shake the rafters. Calcutta churned out by the dozen, but held up to ridicule the rich man's absolute faith in the power of Every show was sold out days in advance. The Bengali Theatre at 25 Domtala Street became a rallying point for the Indian intelligentsia and naturally roused bitter hatred among the English rulers. Mr. Libido? Yes. My name is Joseph Battle. Ah. You may have heard the name. Who hasn't, Mr. Battle? You are the finest scene painter in the East. Well, what is the company theatre's next play? What scenes are you painting for them? I go to all the first nights merely to see your paintings. I no longer work for them, Mr. Libido. I have resigned. Good heavens, man, why? Certain impolitic remarks made by the manager were too much for a man of my sensibilities to bear. I'm through with the East India Company's theatre. You mean to say the talent of an artist of Joseph Battle's excellence will not be used in the service of the theatre? No. Unless you allow me to work for you. Mr. Battle, you really mean that? Sir, I have never been more serious in my life. Mr. Battle, I'm honoured. I'm delighted. Welcome to the Bengali theatre, such as it is. Thank you. Hey! He got ten! What do you do? I'll paint it again. Better.
Debative theater ended in flames. Or so imagined the English merchants who ruled the country. Lebedev himself was dragged to a debtor's prison, declared bankrupt, and forcibly put aboard the ship Lord Thurlow to be taken back to Europe. His only possession then was his cello. Your cello, sir. I did not know that in a kingdom ruled by merchants, my efforts would inflame such hatred. Theatre in Calcutta was born in revolt. The very act of staging a play in Bengali was considered seditious by the English rulers. <laughs> 